Ecclesiastes chapter number 10. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary, and that is your druggist, your, your old time pharmacist that would actually make the drugs, to send forth a stinking savior. Uh, you mean, here's this drug, here, here's this thing that it's made, and it's got dead flies in it. It's not appealing. It's stinking. But that's not the point of the verse. So does a little, the little flies, the dead flies, our little things. A little folly, him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Now that is a remarkable verse because it's saying the man that has wisdom and honor. And if he has a little folly. He stinks like dead flies in ointment. Imagine you go open up your bottle of your ointment. You open it up and you're about to, you know, put it in your hands to, to spread it out, whatever, you, however, you, and there's dead flies in it. And that is what Solomon says to a man that is wise and honorable. But has a little folly. It's remarkable. We don't think about the little things in our life that we do that are folly. And we all have that little something that causes us stink. A wise man's heart is at his right hand. Now that's figurative. That doesn't mean the guy's out there, he's got his heart beating in his hand. Right hand in the Bible is where Jesus sits at God's. Right hand is strength and power. I would assume more people are right handed than they are left handed. And here we go. But a fool's heart is at his left. It's a proverb. Psalms 92 verse 1, Hebrews 8 1. And there's there are more people that have a right hand advantage with their right hand than a left hand. Now there was a whole particular tribe of, of Israel that were left handed and known for their warfare, the Benjaminites. But the Bible says, in black and white, you know, the right-handed is in power. <coughs> Yea, also. Listen, God's the one that wrote this Bible. You got an argument with him, you go fight it with him. It's just that plain and simple. That's what the Bible says. And if you're left-handed, well, I mean, you're not a fool, but... What's the verse say? It's a wrong hand. Yea, also, when he that is a fool walketh by the way. Now, Jesus said, I'm the way. His wisdom faileth him. And he says to everyone that he is a fool. A fool will express himself as who he is, plain and simple. Give him enough words and he'll sling himself. If the spirit of the ruler rises up against thee, leave not thy place. 1 Kings 2.36 Before yielding, pacifieth Ahab with, with Naboth and Jezebel. 
great offenses. Running is a sign of guilt. Maybe when Joseph was alone with Potiphar's wife, and the Bible records it says that there was no man there. She, he left his jacket. Then you read that she says she called the men. I mean, look, here's. Maybe if he had called some men in. Look, I'm fully dressed. Here's my whatever I was doing. Here's what I'm doing. By running, I mean, he kept his character. Don't get me wrong on that. But his jacket being in her hands, or his coat, sometimes running is the wrong thing to do if you're innocent. You just put your hands on, on your knees and, and pray to God. For mercy and grace and the truth. <clears throat> I don't, you know, it's. Running is not always the answer. You got to rely on God, the truth. And you know what? You, you, like Joseph, you may end up in jail for doing right. But when you stand before the judge of all the earth, the right will be done. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, here we go again, as an error which proceedeth from the ruler. Okay, this is the ruler. Now, he said before, I have seen a great evil, but here's an error. It's not an extreme evil, it's an error. Folly is set in great dignity folly. It's raised up. Your public school system raises up folly. And the rich sit in low place. Democracy. A reverse democracy. That is what our government is trying to do with the rich people. Those people who earn their money by their business properly and rightfully. They're trying to attack. While foolishness and folly is... is there are statues and, and, and names of streets for men that were fools. And yet, where is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ city in, in America? I haven't found one. And I've been putting on my Facebook names of Greek gods that are named for cities of America. You want to say, God, we trust? You are so full of baloney. How many cities in America are named for God and God is this? You know? There's no God in the, in the Constitution. There's no Jesus Christ in the Constitution. Don't sell me that junk anymore. I'm tired of it. It's a lie. God is not even in 98% in of the churches in America. You know what the fruits of America are? Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, charismatic movement, and that is not there. That is all folly. That is praise and lift up. You want to make the rich among the low class. That's an error, Solomon says. Here's another one. <clears throat> Here is democracy, right here. Mark this one down. Democracy is, I have seen servants upon horses. 
Uh, wait a minute. How can a servant afford a horse, and what's he doing on the horse? And princes walking as servants upon the earth. To mob rule. The princes are the ones entitled to the horses, not the servants. Look at there. There's America right there, verse 7. Because we brought certain people over here for servitude. Now they get to ride around in the horses while everybody else gets to walk. And Solomon said, it's an error. It's an evil under the sun. Democracy. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. Now what is that? Haman built a pit for Mordecai, and he fell in thereof. Now, I mean, this is not everyone who... who uh, digs a hole is going to fall. This is somebody who has digged a pit, a trap to entrap a person, or usually an animal, normally an animal, but they use it to trap a person. You know what, what we're not told? I think it was mentioned last night in church. We're not ever told what the end life of those high priests that turned Jesus over to Pilate. But it is recorded that Titus in 70 A.D. took a whole bunch of Jewish people and crucified them by the masses. Was that one of the high priests? The Bible records, you try to entrap somebody... Be not deceived, God is not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You know Jacob his entire life, for half his, half his life, he played games. He lied. He had his presence. And you know the final half of his life? I don't mean, I'm not talking about age. I'm talking about you take Jacob's life in general. Half of it was games and presents and, 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 and doing wrong. And you take the other part of his life. You know, he reaped what he sold. One day he comes into his father. His father says, what's thy name? He goes, Esau. And you know, he wrestled with, the Jake, with, with, with Jacob. He wrestled with the angel. And the angel says, what's your name? Jacob. You sure? Because I thought I heard you say one time, I thought you said, thought I heard you say your name was Esau. Hey! Laban, what are you doing? You gave me Leah. Yeah, I know. I don't give the firstborn. Firstborn. You remember that, Jacob? And there are people in their life when they do things, they're going to pay for what they do. That's, I mean, this is not for a guy who just digs a hole. This is, he is building a hole to catch somebody. And whoso breaketh an hedge, a serpent shall bite him. I got Daniel 6, 7, and 24. I got Proverbs 22, 14, Psalms 7, 15, 9, 15, Jeremiah 18, 18. Now the hedge is, is, is a wall. I remember a, 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 <clears throat> through Jezebel breaking down a, a which we're going to see in a minute, boundary lines for you know, land that wasn't theirs. Verse 9. Whoso removeth stone shall be hurt therewith. And these stones are someone's property line. Someone's hedge. You remember the parable that Jesus said about the, the vineyard? You know, he built the, he built the vineyard. He put a hedge about it. 
You know, this is my vineyard. This is the boundaries of my vineyard. This is mine. It's a fence. Fence is, that's yours. This is mine. This is mine, and that's yours. You keep your animals on that side, and I'll keep my animals on this side. But if you break it down, dig it down, and he that cleaveth wood, chops it up, shall be endangered thereby in its justice. I wonder, I don't know completely, but a fence kind of thing maybe. Or maybe someone else's trees on their property. You know, when, when Abraham buys the cave to bury Sarah, it says the field, the cave, and the trees thereof. In the title deed, it says, hey, those trees belong to Abraham. You can't just go over there and cut them down. That's part of his property. There are things on your property where being warned that, hey, it is yours. I mean, we're, I mean, not today when you see the pictures, but the Bible describes the land of Israel as a land that flows with milk and honey. It was a beautiful place at one time before they fell into idolatry and everything. Listen, you remember what the size of those grapes were? So don't you think that there were people who were out, other people, listen, like I said, Ahab was out for Naboth. Land because well, look at the soil there. I can grow certain things, we're told. Okay. If the iron be blunt, now we now the engagement thereof by clay with wood is one subject, but we're going to go into a, really another quick subject here. Talk about clay with wood. Okay, if the iron be blunt, it, it, you know, it's not sharp. If you're going to cut trees, don't use an iron that's blunt. You're not supposed to cut the trees, but if you're going to cut trees, make sure you have a sharp axe. And he do not wit or wet, sharpen by rubbing the edge. All right, if you don't sharpen the axe, then must he put to more strength. You're going to swing harder and more with a dull blade. That's what Solomon's saying. That's his plain, simple logic. <clears throat> but wisdom is profitable to direct the way. I mean, you're going to have to put more work in, into something that is, is dull. Use your wisdom. You, you Be wise. Now, verse 11, Acts 17, 21, surely, and these, these are just references I have in my Bible, so I'm telling you what, surely, the serpent will bite without enchantment. You don't have to play the little flu. A serpent will bite. You don't have to amuse him. Listen, if you stand in the way of a rattlesnake and he's on the sidewalk, you don't need to play music. He will bite you. If he feels threatened, he will bite you. And a babbler is no better. Oh, serpent bite. Most of those serpents over there in Palestine, when they bite you, it's a poison. It's death. Parallelism. Someone's just blah, 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 you know, just words, just talking words with no real meaning. By the way, just a side note. I know I probably got this somewhere else about, about the snake and the enchantment. You know how, you know why you can get fooled by those people over there in India? When they, you know, the little snake coming out of the basket and he plays his little horn. You know how they do that? One, they either break the fangs of the serpent. So when it does bite you, it don't have those two fangs of the poison. Or they starve them snakes so they have no energy. Just want to just tell you Satan's truth out there. Sure want to be a magician there and hold any secrets that I'm not supposed to tell anybody. I just wouldn't want to do anything like that, would I? But that, that's the secret of Saint and charmers or enchantments there. They either break the, fang, the fangs of the snake or they just don't feed the thing. 
the thing is abused. Where is the animal act rights activist for that one? That's extra information. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious. Simple. But the lips of the fool will swallow himself up. Imagine a fool eating himself up. Second Samuel 9 I got on that one. A fool will open his mouth and hang himself. You know, a lot of judges will just let you speak. I mean, if you're going to watch TV, I, I, I'm not going for this. You got to watch TV. You know, the People's Court and stuff like that. The, the learn law. The learn your rights. And to learn that a judge will take certain people and they'll just let them speak. And the other guy, the plaintiff or the defendant, whatever it is, but can, can, I, no, can I, no, just be quiet. I will get to you in a minute. And the person that the judge thinks is, is, is the fool, that judge will just let that person talk, and that person will talk, and that person will talk, and that person will, will, will realize to the judge who he is by his big mouth. And sometimes the judge will turn to the other person and say, see, he didn't have to say nothing. He hung himself. Sometimes you don't need to speak. You don't need to always say, I'm right. You don't always have to say, I got rights. You don't always say, oh, I need to just let the other person speak sometimes. If you're right and they're wrong. A fool will pronounce his foolishness and with that the beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness from the from the start and the end the final of his talking of his talk is mischievous madness revelation 16 14 it's the antichrist it's the it's Adolf Hitler It's this foolish talk that just ends up in madness. A fool also is full of words. Never knows when to shut up. A man cannot tell what shall be. And what shall be after him. Who can tell him? 8.17 and 6.12. You're not going to learn nothing from him. And he's definitely not a prophet. The labor of a foolish wearieth every one of them. You ever work with a fool? You ever had a job and you just had an idiot there that he's just a fool? You know what? He, he ruins the whole crew. Now, yes, I joke and I fool around at work with the crew I work with. I tell jokes and stuff like that. And you know, we're happy, we're laughing, and, and the work, you know, it, even the manager said, you guys get more work done. Sometimes it makes time go by quicker. So when you just got a fool, and he's not working. He's doing everything but work. And he's slowing things down. And that's a cancer, a bad apple. Because he knows not how to go to the city. He has no sense of direction. It's a how that's put in there. He doesn't know how to get to the city. He doesn't know where he's going. I'm trying to read a note here. I got a note here, I don't. Uh, need to have my Bible shrinking. Oh well, I guess that note's going. Something about King James and Alright. Woe to thee. You know, there are three great woes in the book of Revelation. One of the woes of the Bible is, you know, it, 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 you need to perk up your ears. You need to stop what you're doing and say, what is this woe? And hope that this woe has nothing to do with you and there's a way out. 
old land. Oh. When thy king is a child. Well, you know, there were some there were some kings in, in Judah that were a child, and some of them did right. The general sense. When you got someone who, who doesn't know what they're doing, they're too young to know what they're doing, and has no sense of life. He hasn't lived life. He hasn't had problems. And thy princes eat in the morning. Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles. Now see, there's some of the children of Judah that were made kings, but they were in a royal line that were brought up right. And thy princes eat in due season. Now see the morning. First, that's the wrong time. Verse 17 says the due season, the right time. Why is the morning the wrong time in verse 16? I don't know. But verse 17, there's a proper time to be eating. The princes to be eating. Maybe instead of eating, they should be training that kid up. I don't know. For strength. All right, they're eating because they need to eat to survive, not for drunkenness. Now, who's the perfect example of the Bible on that one? Belshazzar. He's eating and drinking to be drunk. And you know what? He is told that night that he's going to lose his kingdom, and he doesn't even get down on his knees and repent. You know, Nebuchadnezzar got down the next thing to a beast. And yet he got down his hands and knees and praised to God and got his kingdom back and praised and worshiped with God. And that was the last time you heard of him. Then Belshazzar steps in with his party that we learned about Sunday morning. And the entire nation of Babylon was destroyed because the enemy diverted the water, the river. <clears throat> no one knew the river moved. <laughs> Where were the soldiers? Where were the people? <laughs> By much slothfulness, oh, laziness, the building decayed. You know, when you go up north and drive around in the, in the old farmlands, um, I remember it was a place we were going to Norwich a couple of times. Right, right along the side of the road. I mean, here's these barns are just completely leaning over. I mean, one, one good win and they're going. That's because no one has taken care of them. No one has strengthened them. You let a building go and it will go. Flat. Collapse. That's why I don't want to own a house. I did own a house. And it takes a lot of work. I'd rather rent. Renting is better in my view. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. It collapses. We don't fix and take care of. That's the curse of owning a property I have as a note here. Maybe not for you, but for me. Man, if you ain't got the money to do it, and you got a leak, and you can't fix that leak, that leak is only going to get worse. And everything around that leak is going to get now infected. <clears throat> a feast is made for laughter. Okay. A wine making maketh merry. Now, it didn't say wine as in strong drink, did it? You know, there must be something about really fresh grapes. I'm not going to make fun of the of, of the, the juice that's on the shelves that we buy. I mean, there, there are preservatives and stuff like that in that. But, I mean, that's the next close thing that you can get to the real grape. But real grape juice. 
Wine maketh merry, not drunk, merry. Something about it makes you happy. Maybe people who are depressed, maybe you should get some grapes. Now, I used to have a juicer and I would buy grapes and put them through that juicer, and you know, it was great. And you put that up next to a glass of something that's been on the shelf. You want apple juice. There's a cider mill that we that we would visit every every season. When the apples are right and they, they make it before you. But when you took that apple sauce home, you know, that was the great. That was no, that was unlike something you could get in the store. Can I have it, you know, all the way to the to the to the gallons gone? And if you left it too long, then yeah, you know, it, you can tell, okay, it, it's getting ready to be fermented and now it's time to throw up. But it was happy to have that apple cider. Fresh. You know, you waited, you left the you let the thing sit, and then you know, you get really happy, and then you get sick and you throw up and stuff like that. That's nothing like that. something about real fruit juice. And prices weren't so bad as they are in the produce. I, I get get me another fruit juice and buy the vegetables like I do and make more juices. It's better tasting what you get in a plastic jug or a glass bottle. I mean, I was going on about the verse 19. Get get your fresh own juice. It's it's so much good. Making me merry thinking about it. But money answers all things. What a thing. Feast, wine, but money. And you take that as far as a Christian, First Timothy six, as far as money in a Christian, and a warning. A money can answer everything. It can give you false justice through a bribe. A parent could give their children a few dollars or something to go get a candy bar. Money made by an employee who can pay his bills. Listen, when you use money properly, your bills are being paid. I understand. You know, you there's things you got to owe, okay? I owe because of my car broke down a couple times and I had to use a, a credit. I'm paying and all that, and you know what? If I use money properly, there's laughter, there's merriness. If I don't use my money properly and I'm getting I'm getting mail and I'm getting phone calls, you know, this is the first and final note, this is the third and final note, this is lawyer such and such, this is credit company such and such. I'm not too happy. I'm afraid to answer the phone. I've been through that time. <clears throat> you know, you buy yourself an answer machine so you can censor the calls who, who's calling you. I've been through that. You know, every other utility bill you get in the mill, three letters are from people who want their money. I've been through that. When you pay your bills like you're supposed to, then you got laughter and merriness. You know, kind of, verse 20 is kind of hard. See, we don't want a king in America. Never did. We rather have a president. And I think it says Daniel was the third president and the other presidents wanted Daniel dead. That's what you want as a world leader in the Bible for president? One was good and the others wanted the other one dead. So what do you do with your campaigns? You sling mud and hope the other one drops dead before voting so you get in the office. But curse not the king or any ruler, Christian. Curse not the king, Christian. Curse not, I want what the modern Bible say, president. Curse not the king. No. Not in 
thy thought. Whosoever looketh upon a woman, the lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery with her. You don't even have to say with your mouth. Here is a sin of thought. It does not have to be verbal. Like, you don't have to touch that woman to be charged with adultery. You just got to think about it. Now, let me ask you to think about something. Do you realize that your thoughts will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ and it, for those at the great white throne? Do you know, Christian, that every thought, you know, you'll be charged with murder, you'll be charged with, with adultery, you'll be charged with stealing, you'll be charged with dishonoring your parents, you'll be charged with false witness, you'll be charged with idolatry, you'll be charged with it all just by thinking about it. Get that. You don't have to have a web page. You don't have to have a Facebook about the, the rule. You just got to think it. And yes, I have been guilty by thoughts. Mm -hmm. And curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. Your employer. The, you know, the government that taxes you. They're rich, sort of. The king, the rulership, and the rich is pretty much everyone that is over you. For a bird of the air, a little birdie told me, And mark that with Mark chapter 4, verses 4 and verse 15. Birds are likened to devils. Something to do with Satan will go off and tell the person somehow, tell a communication. Listen, you, I'll tell you something. You take any Christian anywhere in the world today. And if God gave him the opportunity to walk up to the President of the United States with the Secret Service there, a born again Bible believing Christian. And that guy, by the power of God, is given the ample amount of time to speak to the President of the United States about Jesus Christ and salvation. Do you think President Obama would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ by what slack Christians have been giving him? By what Christians write on their Facebook pages? About the websites that Christians have about him? Do you really think that President Obama will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior because of those Christians out there and what their actions are? Never mind their thoughts. Do you really think he would believe the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior? Do you think the things that you say at the workplace do you really think if somebody were given the opportunity to witness to your boss, the owner of your company, by how Christians have treated and have done business and cheated just as much as the worldly one, as the lost? That's why you ain't got no revival today. Because of Christian conductivity, of vileness, of wickedness, of slander of the mouth, too much of the mouth. Griping and complaining. Your conduct, Christian, and your rebelliousness against authority, Christian, is why people won't get saved. That's plain and simple.
and I stand for my own. And yes, our president does stupid things, but let's see you go in the White House and do the job. If you're so great, you're so wonderful, let's see you on the ticket next election. And then let's see you do the job. You're so wonderful. You're so perfect. So all these talk show hosts. Why don't I see them on a ticket? Because they're all talk. They're all windbags. One of them. When somebody calls him up, on, you know, if he don't like it, he cuts him right off. Well, not one, but two of them. That's not the conduct of a Christian. Verse 20. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice. And that which has wings shall tell the matter. Now that is a spooky. You mean if I'm lying on my bed? Let's get this. Let's get the Bible. And I'm not sleeping. Or if I'm dreaming. I'm sleeping and I'm dreaming. And I dream about the king or my boss or the government official. You mean to tell me that's a bird or something that has wings or in my bedroom? What the Bible says. And it's going to take the voice that I say. You know, you better thank God he doesn't open up your spiritual eyeballs. You'd be amazed at what you would see. You believe the Bible, King James 611 Bible, right? You believe every word. That word says that there is a bird that hangs out in your room waiting for you to think evil of rulers so he can take that message I read in Job 1 and Job 2 Satan goes up to God and says hey what about your, what about your servant such and such I read in Revelation 12 he says he's the accuser of the brethren Satan doesn't have to lie about it and say hey did you see what that guy was thinking about his boss did you see what your Christian is saying about the leader of the nation and, you know, God, doesn't, doesn't the Bible say that you set up kings and you pull down kings? Yes, it does. Do you see what your person, your Christian is saying about the man that you put in that office? God, your people are no better than my people. My people hate who you put in that office. Your people are supposed to love who you put in the office, and they act just like my people. What are you going to say to that? Hold on, let me make another evil spirit coming up. Did you hear that? Did you just see, see what that guy just did on his Facebook? That's what the little devil just told me. Mark 4, 4, 4, 15. Maybe those, those same same ones that eat the seeds of the gospel that you plant. Because your thoughts and your mind is not right to rulers and rulership and government. And you expect to go out and seed the gospel for people to get saved. And your thoughts and your bedchamber are wickedness. That's the Bible. That is the Bible. It is a sin. Close with this. It is a sin to speak evil and to curse with your thoughts the rulers that God has set up on this world. Yeah, they may be of Satan. Luke 4, Matthew 4. But God is the supreme. If you read your Bible and study, to show thyself the food on the God of, of workmen that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth, you realize that God set them up. 
You know, they may be Satan's, but God set them up. And your actions may be preventing their salvation. Plain and simple. Our thoughts will be judged too.